Grace, mercy, and peace are yours in abundance from God our Lord and Savior, Christ Jesus. Our text for our meditation this morning is taken from the book of Romans, chapter 10, verses 8 through 13. The word is near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart. It is the word of faith we are proclaiming. That if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you confess and are saved. As the scripture says, anyone who trusts in him will never be put to shame. For there is no difference between Jew and Gentile. The same Lord is Lord of all and richly blesses all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. So far, text. Your Christian friends, those of you here and watching online, you heard me say at the beginning of the service that this is a 40-day wandering. Not aimlessly, of course. We are going towards something. We're going toward the cross with our God. And this, all the sermons during the season of Lent will follow the theme, Walk This Way. And today, it is Valentine's Day, of course, and so it's fitting to talk about love. And I think we get a little confused when we look at this Hallmark holiday and what exactly love means. And so today the theme is love like this. Love like God. What exactly does that mean? Well, what if I said to you, I want you to know just how much I love you. Some of you just met me a couple minutes ago. You have no idea who I am or what that means. If I say that to my wife or my children, they've had... 17, 16, 14, 13, 9 and 9 years to see me. What am I like? What do I do? Do my actions back up what I say? I want you to know just how much I love you. For all of you, it'll be 14 years in July having to deal with me. You know what it's like when I say, I want you to know how much I love you. And yet, it can be difficult sometimes because some people focus on emotion on Valentine's Day or candy or flowers. Those aren't bad, of course. There's nothing wrong with gestures, tokens of love and affection. And yet they can be confusing. So I want you to hear my confession and my witness. From my heart to my lips, Jesus loves me. And from my lips to God's ears, Jesus loves you. I have to go into the history of St. Valentine's Day a little bit. This involves legends. It's cloudy at best. You can go back to, oh, the 200s A.D., and you hear about certain Catholic priests in the Roman Empire who may or may not have risked everything to marry young lovers. And that's kind of where it goes nowhere from there. There's numerous St. Valentines in the Catholic Church, actually. And so the history doesn't really mean a whole lot. All that matters nowadays is that you buy hearts and flowers and chocolate. Well, I want to talk about risking everything for love. How many of you know who these two twerps are? This was back in 2011. Jordan Powers and James Hooker. She's 18, he is 41. He was a teacher at her high school, a business teacher, and he left his wife and three children and his job and everything so he could be with his girlfriend. I know, it sounds disgusting. And um, that's an awful example. And yet he left everything because he just loved this 18-year-old girl so much. And so they're living in an apartment in California. And that's kind of where the story ends. It's just awful to think of that. And yet he wanted to follow his heart. Now, that's not all bad to follow your heart. Because God thinks it's pretty important that you should. As long as it's going in the right direction. Listen to verse 10. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified. 
It is with your mouth that you confess and are saved. When someone is about to die, when I walk up to them, I ask them for a confession. I want to hear from their heart to their lips. Jesus loves me. I don't do this because it's contrived. I want to give their chance a soul to speak. Those feelings matter a lot. Those beliefs are incredibly important. Listen to verse 9. That if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. People have risked everything. Not for the love of an 18-year-old girl. They've risked everything for their God. They've gone through life, imprisonment, martyrdom even, all for that love of their Savior. That's wonderful and awesome. But you have to know that for the extremely bad examples and the good examples, the only difference with those feelings in the heart is what they're based on. You have to go to the right foundation, and that is in the Bible. At Star Bethlehem, we spend a lot of time taking people through exactly what that foundation is. If you just walked in off the street and told me that you wanted to join my church, I'd say, hang on. You don't know what we believe yet. So I'll spend, well, roughly two months with a person going through what we believe so that they are ready, so that they have that foundation to place that belief on. We'll carry them all the way to heaven. We spend three years with our confirmands going over all the teachings of God's word in detail so that they might have a foundation to base their life on. This is all extremely important. Listen to verse 8 once more. The word is near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith we are proclaiming. You don't have a hard time finding God's word. It's on the internet. It's on your cell phone. There's probably a Bible in every one of your homes. If you really needed one, I'd give you one from the back of church. God's Word is everywhere. So if you want that foundation, it's not because you don't have access to it in 2016. It's because we're either too lazy or distracted. And while that's kind of sad, I guess that's the reality. And so from my heart to my lips, Jesus loves me. That's my confession of faith. And if you don't believe that, then hear my witness. From my lips to God's ears, Jesus loves you. One of the sad things about Valentine's Day is that it just reminds me how people trade the real love of God, the unconditional love of God, for something cheap and sometimes only physical. Maybe you've heard of Ashley Madison. Life is short, have an affair. It's a really lousy slogan. And I suppose it doesn't really matter because no one's going to find out, right? Well, until August, right? August of 2015, the whole database, everybody who was part of Ashley Madison was outed. Everyone. Government officials, clergy, Christians all over. Everyone knew. And the lie, of course, is that you could get away with this because no one will ever know. Which is ridiculous because your God knows everything. And yet some people go through life living that lie. One of these per people was, well, you have to kind of, that's John. That's John and his ever-loving family around him. It's kind of a goofy picture. But um, John Gibson was a part of Ashley Madison. He was a teacher at a Baptist seminary in Louisiana. And I tell you this not to rip on the Baptists but to tell you that this guy was an extremely sincere Christian and devout. He knew his doctrine backwards and forwards, and he got caught in this. And after he was outed in August, along with everybody else in, on Ashley Madison, his wife forgave him. But he couldn't forgive himself. And just a month later, John killed himself. Because he could not live with that guilt and that shame anymore. See, this is the danger. In the first Sunday of Lent, the Gospel lesson is about temptation. If you don't know how Satan works, you've got to open your eyes. The problem isn't so much the sin. All of us sin to a degree every day. Some, you could say, are worse than others. And yet Satan takes that sin, and then he uses his accusing power 
That's what his name means. He's the accuser. And he tells you that no one could ever love you. He tries to separate you. Make you feel alone until you don't even love yourself. You despair of everything, including God's love. That is a horrible lie. Because what does our God say in verse 11? Anyone who trusts in Him will never be put to shame. God included people who are part of Ashley Madison. And any other sin that was so great, I don't even, I, I'm trying to use my imagination, what sin could be so horrible that you think God could never love you? And I've talked to people who have done far less in the eyes of the world than jump on a website. And they still believe that. So great is the lie. We'll hear the truth one more time. Anyone who trusts in him will never be put to shame. Never. You have to hear from my lips to God's ears, God loves you. And you have to be convinced of that, not because I'm such a trustworthy person, but because the Spirit goes with my words. And He convinces you of that love. Part of the horror of seeing middle schoolers and adolescents and your own children is the identity that they go through and getting comfortable in their own skin. We all have to go through that. And there are websites, <laughs> hot or not, Tinder, you've heard of these, where you can swipe left or right if, in case you look good or bad to somebody else. And people actually base their self-worth on this trash. But it's true. We're so superficial in our society that whether you're skinny or fat, tall or short, smart or dumb, as if this matters, People have to know that God created them unique and wonderful. That's how God made you. And to go forward comfortable with that, not having gift envy, looking at other people saying, I wish I could be like this or that. We can change ourselves to some degree, but in some ways we are what God made us. And that's okay. He did it because he loved us. And if you don't believe me when I say that God loves you, Look at what he did. Even if you don't have my 14-year-old background of my ministry here, you have God's 40 days in the wilderness of letting Satan tempt him. You have his trip to the cross. You have his passion where you see his love in action on the screen every week. Come back next week. Watch it again. And you'll see him get even a little bit closer. Know that you are never alone, even if you feel that way some days, because the only person who has ever truly been alone, this side of the grave, is Jesus. As he hung on the cross, suffering for your sins, he cried out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? That is truly being alone. And because he was in your place, you will never be. You are never alone. No matter how people might make you feel small, I know kids can be mean. Adults can be mean too. You're never alone. Your God is always with you. How many of you know who that is? That is not Miss Piggy. Close, Joe. That is Denise. I did not know this. It's just horrible doing sermon prep. You learn things like Miss Piggy and Kermit the Frog, even though they were married, they got a divorce. And Kermit the Frog told the world back in September that you should follow your heart. And his new girlfriend is Denise. I know. It's horrible, Sonia. You just, you just, you're shaking your head. It's just, yeah. And I, I looked at that and I said, what if God would have followed his heart? What if God looks at you and says, this is just disgusting. With this person on Ash Wednesday, we talked about rebellion. How you know better and you still do it. Treachery. How you sin and you think no one knows. This is ridiculous. And yet God didn't follow his heart away from us. He stayed with us. Even when everyone else would have left us. How great is his love. 
Hear verses 12 and 13 once more. There is no difference between Jew and Gentile. The same Lord is Lord of all and richly blesses all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. God is not fickle. God is faithful. That is the definition of his love. When you look at the name of the Lord, it means the faithful one, the one who does not change. His name is a form of the linking verb be, to be, to never change. The power that is in that Hebrew language, and what he, God took every opportunity to communicate how awesome his love is for us. Now it's changeless, always faithful, unconditional. These are the words that describe it. And so from my lips to God's ears, Jesus loves you. Those words have power. And those words can change you. Dear friends, as you walk through the wilderness, remember to walk this way. To love like this. Hear my confession and hear my witness. From my heart to my lips, Jesus loves me, I know it. That is my prayer for you on this Valentine's Day, that you would have this too. Because from my lips to God's ears, Jesus loves you. Amen. Please stand.